Hello everyone. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about pods, replica sets, deployment and services in Kubernetes. We'll also see an example demo for all of these. Before proceeding, we recommend you to watch our tutorial on how Kubernetes works. I assume that you have basic knowledge about Kubernetes, Docker and how to run containers. So let's get started. First, let's read something about pod, replica set and deployments. Pod is the smallest deployable unit in the Kubernetes. So you can spawn a container with the help of pods. So container is wrapped up inside a pod. Replica set manage multiple units of pods. So you can have n number of pods by defining a replica sets. In deployment, you combine pod and replica set all together and it becomes a deployment. So deployment is nothing but it wraps up pod and replica set in one package. Now let's see what is the difference between these in action. So pod cannot do rolling update. So when you want to deploy your application, you will spawn up a new pod and the older one should get replaced by the new one without any downtime. So pod is not capable of doing that. Whereas replica set is also not able to do that. It cannot do rolling update. However, if a pod crashes in a replica set, so suppose there are two pods running and one of them crashes, so replica set will spawn another one. But still you cannot do rolling update with replica sets. Whereas in deployment, it is capable of doing rolling update. So you can deploy your application without any downtime. So pod is good for development purposes and replica set is also good for development purposes. Whereas deployment is good for production purpose. Pod just creates pods, whereas replica sets creates group of pods and deployment creates replica sets with pods. We will see these things in action shortly. Let's see the basic code on how to write pod deployment and replica set. So here I have a file pod.yml. Here I have specified kind as pod, which means it is going to create a pod and these are the details related to the pod, the name and the label. And at the end, we have the specification for containers. So the name of the container is Nginx pod. And the image I'm using here is Nginx latest. And the port on the container will open is 80. Now I'm going to create this pod. So first of all, you should have a mini cube up and running. So I have a mini cube cluster up and running. Let's see what all things are running right now. So right as of now, there are no pod services or deployment running. Let's run the pod.yml. So you have to run kubectl apply hyphen f pod.yml. It says the pod has been created. Let's run the kubectl get all. And here, as you can see, it is creating the container with the Nginx pod. It is a pod. Similarly, we have replica sets and deployments. So in replica set, you have to specify kind as replica set. In the next thing, we are specifying the details about the replica sets. We want two replica of the pod. So there will be two pod running for the same container. And here at the end, we have specified the specification related to the container. And here as of now, let's first deploy Nginx with the latest version. Later on, we will change the version with this. We have also specified the match label selectors. We will see shortly what is the use of this. And just to differentiate, I have followed the naming convention as Nginx replica set, Nginx pod, Nginx deployment and so on. So similarly, we have the deployment.yml where we have specified kind as deployment and the metadata is there. Then we have the specification of the replicas. We want two replicas of the pod and then we have the selector labels and then the container definition. And here I have used the naming convention as Nginx deployment. So let's go ahead and run it. So first of all, let's deploy the replica set.yml. I will do get all to see what all things have been created. So as you can see, this was the pod which was created and it's already running. Then we created a replica set just now. So it has created two copies of the pod and you see the naming convention here of for the pod is nginx replica set hyphen some random string. So these are the pod corresponding to the replica set. And here at the end, you can also see the details of the replica set. And it says desired count is two because we specified two pods should be running at a given time. 
and currently there are two running and there are zero ready to serve your request because it is still in the creation state let's apply the deployment as well so here as you can see the replica set pods are in running state and the deployment pods are still creating state because we just created it four seconds ago and at the bottom if you see there is one more thing nginx deployment which says desired count current and the ready count and now as you see the nginx replica set ready count is now two that means the pods are ready to serve the request we'll once again run it and see that all the deployment pods are also in running state and ready to serve the request so we have created all these pods with the help of pod replica set and deployment but these are still not visible to the outside world that means we can still not access the application so if we just do a mini cube ip to get the cluster ip and try to access these we will not be able to so this is the ip of the mini cube cluster if i just go there and hit it and we won't see the application and we have specified the port to be 80 but still it won't listen on that so pods are not visible to the outside cluster this is your kubernetes cluster in green and there's a pod and we are running the container of nginx exposed on port 80 when we are trying to access it through the browser we don't have any link to connect to this pod so how to make it available to the outside world the answer is using services so kubernetes provide a concept of services it act as a network endpoint for other services or external users to connect to so there might be a case where you might be having two different pods so they can connect to each other using services as well as if you want to connect a pod through the browser or through anywhere then still you need to use a service to achieve that so services are long running object it has an ip address it has a stable fixed port on which you can access your application it can be used to connect pods how service and pods are connected if you saw like in our manifest file we specified that there are selector labels so pods have label field in the form of key value pairs like app colon nginx so let's go to our pod.yml and you see there are labels app nginx pod and if you go to deployment or replica set you have match label selector app colon nginx so you specify these key value pairs in the pods and in the service definition you specify those selectors so service checks like what all pods have the same selector specified in the service and it forwards the request to those pods service looks for matching key value pair among the pods service can be of different types so first of all let's see we have a deployment.yml file and here I have specified mesh label selectors as app equals to nginx deployment now we have created service file for all these I have created pod service dot yml and here I have specified kind as service the name of the service and I have specified the selector label that is app equal nginx pod so if you see pod dot yml it has the label app nginx pod so whatever request comes to this pod service will be redirected to the pod which has the label app nginx pod here we have specified the node port to be 30080 that means the outside world will try to connect to this service using 30080 and the request will be redirected to the container on the port 80 here we have specified the type to be node port let's see what is that now there are different types of service that you can create as we just saw this service is type node port so by default the service is of type cluster ip so cluster ip service is exposed to internal to the kubernetes cluster so by default the service can interact with other services in the kubernetes cluster by default that means the type of the service by default is cluster ip the other type could be node port so service would be exposed to outside world or maybe browser we can choose port to be exposed so we can specify a port like 30080 
which we just did so in the example we have used the same node port and we have uh, specified the node port to be 30080 that means when we will try to access this pod nginx we will access it through the port 30080 then you can have another type of service that is load balancer service is exports to outside world using a load balancer so in AWS or Google Cloud, the cloud providers provides a load balancer like application load balancer, elastic load balancer. So you can specify type as load balancer if you want to use the load balancer of the cloud. Then comes the external name. It does not have selector and uses DNS names instead. So it will redirect the traffic based on the DNS names instead of the labels. So here you have your pod and will create a service with the specified app nginx which is specified in the pod as well and then the your browser will be able to connect to the pod. So let's see these in action. So I have podservice.yml and I'll access this on the port 30080. So I'll apply this podservice.yml and it should create a service. So here as you see it has created a service and it is of type node port and 30080 is the port which we will try to connect and internally it will be forwarded to the port 80. Now we should be able to access the nginx pod. So this is our Minikube cluster IP and this is the port 30080 to access the pod. Okay, as you can see the default page of Nginx has been loaded. That means we are successfully able to access the Nginx pod. Now we'll create the service related to the replica set and deployment. So this is replica set service.yml file here again the kind is service and then the selector is nginx replica set which means it is going to connect to this replica set yml pod where we have specified the key value as app nginx replica set and here I have changed the port to be 30081 to differentiate it with the other service. So let's go ahead and create this one. Similarly, I'm going to apply for the deployment service as well. So kubectl get all will have the service related to the deployment to the pod service and as well as the replica set service. And here as you can see, these are available on different ports. 30080 is the pod service, 30081 is the replica set service and 30082 is the deployment service. Now we can go and try to access this port separately and we should get the default nginx page. This one is working that means the replica set is working fine and the 82 is the deployment one and it is loading this is also working fine. Now if I do kubectl get pods I can see all the pods running so this is the nginx pod which is running without deployment or replica set. I am going to delete it. And I'll do a get all or maybe just the pods. And here we see that the pod has been deleted and it's not coming up again. That means pod are treated as cattle. They just crash. It won't come back on its own unless they are deployed with or run with the replica set or deployment. Here in this case, if uh, we delete delete pod and uh, we delete this pod of replica set with the string 4gv99 it is going to delete that as you can see that pod has been deleted and a new one has started creating so with replica set the state is managed the desired count is managed as soon as one pod crashes other one spawn immediately but as you see that when a pod crashes or when you change the version of the application and deploy it again the pod gets deleted and new one comes up so there is a downtime in between so to avoid that downtime deployments comes into picture so with deployment you can do a rolling update 
So in deployment.yml, now I am going to deploy it with the version 114.2. Now as you see, I just uh, applied the changes for deployment.yml with the new version and here you see that the container is creating but before that the old containers are still up and running and serving the old request. That means there is no downtime. Once these new pods are up and running for the deployment, then these pods will get deleted automatically. So there will not be any downtime in between. So these two deployment pods have come up and it's ready and up and running. This is the benefit of using deployments and we have also seen which is used where and what are the difference between these. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like subscribe. Thanks for watching. Keep learning. Keep sharing.